Community Program is a three credit package program for you English, ADC, which is uh, Drama in the Community, and ADD, which is Drama in Production. The English follows the same curriculum as the other English classes within the school, Drama in the Community, where I teach my 29 university-bound students how to teach drama, the theatre in production, and in that course we write and tour a children's show that's an hour long, and we take it to around 26 different schools. You are fabulous. We are going to be fabulous. We'll just go. We'll set up just like we did it yesterday, right? Who remembers the day yesterday? Just like we just pretend in your mind. We did it yesterday. Oh. something is to teach it and um, that was a really really big part of our course this year we spent uh, three weeks in one school and three weeks in another and we'd go in we'd never met the kids and sometimes you'd get different age groups so we worked with ages um, you could get anywhere between kindergarten to grade eight and you go into the classroom you get to know the teacher you observe the teacher um, and you learn from the teacher really we have actually been through high school together for four years and like a lot of us have taken drama We've worked together for a really long time and we're really close with each other and I think that's a really big reason as to why we work so well together. Being around each other so much at first was hard to do when we worked out scenes and stuff, but in the end, like we pull it together like as a family and as a team. So it's great like watching us, like watching the whole group develop like that. I think another part of the reason that we can work so well together and like be so open with each other and close is that we spend a lot of time doing the drama activities and games that we were going to do with the students we work with. So, you know, we made fools of ourselves a lot and did silly <laughs> things, so that made us really like open with each other. Towers, drawbridge, moat! And just in terms of like how the course balances out, some other students who aren't in the course are like, oh, you guys are like, you don't have to do English. Like, and in a sense, on some days we don't have to do English, but on other days we do English for three periods a day. Because we didn't have shows Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of this week, so we just did English. One of the great things about our English class uh, was in studying Shakespeare, we did a lot of performance with Shakespeare. And I think that our opportunity as really comfortable drama students um, to get up there in small groups and perform scenes and do performance work really helped us understand the play on a level that I don't think we would get if we had just sat there and read it. It was great to be able to come into high school and do something different and to be able to have this opportunity. I give them a crash course on how to use drama in the elementary classroom. They get that for three weeks, and then they get placed in an elementary school classroom for three weeks in the afternoons. What you are seeing today is Rebecca, who is doing a lesson with students. These students Hello. will Emma? see her Austin's in a play. Austin's gonna be the prince. Emma, you're gonna be the queen, and Abdul, you're gonna be the king. So can you pose as if you were posing for a picture of the royal family? Perfect. Their teacher, uh, Mrs. Joyce, she gave me the curriculum right off the bat to look at to see the sort of things that they were going to be learning. She provided me with the resources, all the books about medieval times and things they'd be learning so that I could use those. Mostly she's given me a lot of, or just let me kind of take the reins and do what I wanted to come up with and I've run them by her and she's really liked what we've been doing. So I think it's been really supportive and just it's been a good experience with her. So if I call castles, you're going to get into groups of four as fast as you can and make a castle. If I call royal family, you're going to get into groups of three as fast as you can and pose like a royal family. And if I call knights, you're going to get into groups of two as fast as you can and pose as knights. A lesson about physicality, so working with body language, facial expressions, how they could show me without words uh, what character they were, who they were trying to portray. I like Tableau because I just think it's pretty cool how you freeze in a position. Like if you're fighting, you'd freeze like in that or something like that. I think it's pretty cool. So I'm going to be reading some information about knights and some information about peasants, what their lives were like in medieval times. Protecting the castle. Protecting people and the castle. 
roll on the wall is when we have the outline of a character and we say we we tell how what character traits they are and how they act who thinks that they can think of a character trait that would be on the inside of the night loyalty loyal Think about the kind of jobs that a peasant has to do and the kind of character traits that they would have to have to be able to do those jobs, Ben. Backbreaking. I think I'd be a king because I'm the one with all the power. One of the reasons this program is so outstanding is because the students in the course are forced to go from student to teacher and they cross that line, they are no longer just learning, they are teaching, and they are responsible for what is going on in the classroom. So I watch them grow up right before my eyes. One of you and your partner is going to be a reporter for the king, and the king wants to know how his subjects are feeling about their jobs. Do you need any supplies? Yes, I do, I need, I need a new shield. I found it difficult being the reporter because you'd have to think of lots of different questions so you don't always say the same question. Do you ever feel like quitting your job of being a peasant? I've always wanted to, but if I do, my family will not have no food. <laughs> I see what you mean. Today's lesson is going to be about character, so we'll probably really quickly review the things that they learned last week so that they can tie in using body and voice when they focus on character. Any of your friends went into battle and died? And Knight, how did you answer that one? Yes, yeah, Samantha the third. He got shot in the face with the arrow. How did you feel about that? I felt very sad and disappointed that sad my friend just got shot. A lot of what I have learned between this one and the last placement that I did was the importance of being flexible. If they're really getting into it, maybe just forgetting a part of the lesson and letting them keep going to see them learning. So I think that's probably the biggest thing that I've learned. Hot seat was when somebody would go up a volunteer and then they'd either be a peasant or a knight and people would ask them questions that would give them clues. Is your father a rich man or a poor man? Poor man. Poor man? Where do you live? In a stone house. How do you like your job? It is very hard. It's but very hard. I still do it. Who has their guess at what Abdul was? Dan and a? A uh, knight. A knight? Were you a knight? Yes. That was tricky because the first one, was your father a rich man or a poor man? Some people might think that maybe the knights had rich families, right? But they didn't have to, as long as they sent their son to go get training, right? That was tricky. I think it's been a big confidence builder. I really enjoy when I ask a question and they just get it right on, you know, why do you think we'd be doing this because of this? Oh, perfect. <laughs> it feels really good to know that they, they're remembering the things that we've learned, that they're excited. They come up to me almost every day asking if we're going to do drama and what are we going to do today? Are we going to get to do drama? Yeah, Younger students adore, worship the high school student. When they see Rebecca's people on stage teaching lessons, then they pay attention. You know, don't bully, be nice to people, include people who may be different. It started as a brainstorming session, a lot of uh, working on scenes with uh, just key words that Miss Russell would give us. Magic, make a scene. And after that, we eventually had so many hordes of scenes that we had enough to put a show together. We had our title, Voices and Choices. And so today has probably been about our 16th show. Well, it's been a long summer, but I'm back, and I'm ready to be the best pencil that I can be. Yeah, I try not to make too many snakes pencil. I'm feeling a little lazy, you know. Yeah. Lazy. Plus, for me, the most passionate color. I'm always ready. Get it? Red. And what are you ready for? Sitting in the pencil case? I mean, come on. She's never going to use you. Well, at least we'll never get dull. Okay, got my pencil out. Better give it a good sharpen. You and me.
period. So you really get to play to your strengths. Um, so people who love working with fabric or um, like textile stuff, they've done the costume work. And people who are really good writers, talented writers who love writing, did work on the script. Um, musicians did music. The scene change music and little instrumental things like that, I basically just watched the show and sort of improvised and it sort of evolved throughout the time we were running the show and it's now what it is today. And then in terms of the vocal numbers, those were rehearsed pieces and usually they were songs that already exist that we changed the words to or something like that. Each day I would come to school with some choreography in mind and we would work on it for about an hour and a half to two hours each day for a week. Sometimes like you come with something and it doesn't work out or uh, people get frustrated because ideas are clashing and stuff. But I think in the end, um, like Miss Russell has said, this is the best show we've had and so like it just is everybody coming together and making the show what it is. Miss Russell watches the show every time we do it, so after a show, she'll come up to us and say, this was really good, but I saw you come out of character here, or your lines weren't clear here. So I find personally, uh, to better myself, having her there to tell me, okay, this was good, but to improve, I know that really helps. In both uh, courses, the students are creating something, and then they're, uh, they have to be critical on what they're creating, be it a lesson plan, be it a scene for a show, because the next day we have to make it better. We share our problems, we share our, our ideas, and there's constant uh, creativity and uh, critical thinking going on. It's not just the acting also with the play aspect of it either. There's a lot of unloading and loading we have to do and like the whole tour part of it. We have to produce it, we have to kind of semi-direct it ourselves, a lot of writing, like all that stuff. So there's so many different areas to get grades and to get what you need to get done here, more than just what the kids see or what people see on stage. The learning comes through the accountability. The students have to be there for their students in their placements. They have to teach those lessons for the performance part of the program. We have shows booked. Those students have paid a dollar and they want their dollar's worth of performance. So I find that that accountability really pushes the learning. When the learning is pushed, the result is personal growth and it's wonderful to witness that. They grow. It's, it's not something that they have to sit and answer a question to on a piece of paper. It's a, it's, it's, a, a, like an epiphany and I see it over and over again. It's that going from uh, a student to an adult. <laughs>